you know, I have the privilege of interacting with a lot of people. And one of the things that I'll often see is there is a, a often, I don't know how to politely say this, um, and this is going to come across as really awkward, um, but I want you to stick with me. I often see a lot of differences between the confidence levels of different groups. Um, and, you know, I'm well aware now as I've gotten older, I sort of see patterns that some groups, some sort of social class, people from certain social classes or, um, you know, that they, the, the color of their skin, the gender, um, they have an extreme amount of confidence. And this is because a lot of people have told them to get out there and play. And I'm not going to name, you know, name names and stuff because people are going to get upset. But what I'm more concerned about is not those folks, right? So this, this question that I often sort of ponder and, and think about, and I, you know, I've asked a number of different people and I get really interesting responses is, you know, they'll, they'll initially say, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur and I will say, why aren't you doing it right now? And everybody comes up with all these different excuses. I'm not ready. Um, I'm not at the right stage in my life. Um, you know, any number of different ones, but there are, there is a certain kind of person and I'm not going to name them. You can, you know, look them up, just go and look up fortune 500 CEOs. And you'll see that there is a certain kind of person that comes up, um, just on the, you know, face value. I'm not saying that there is no depth to any of this stuff. Um, but at face value, there's a certain, certain group that you, you see a lot that's overrepresented. And, you know, when you have a conversation and you ask that question, a certain group almost always says, yeah, I'll do it right now. Um, but then when you ask that of, of other people that have not had the same set up in life that they don't have that response. They almost inevitably default to, I'm not good enough. They default to, I, I'm not ready. I don't have everything all together. And it's, it's a fascinating response, sort of psychological response that you see. And you know, it, it, absolutely, it could be due to, you know, various different genetic reasons. I'm not discounting any of those things, but I don't think that that is quite plausible um, all the time. I think we often subtly tell people that it's okay to do something, and it's not necessarily like, you know, it's explicit, but if you're raised in a certain way and you have certain opportunities, so for example, you're given the opportunity to play in different sports or things like that, that have different rules and set up in different ways that you will see life challenges in different different ways. I know I'm being really cagey. I'm very, very well aware. Um, there's a reason for it. I don't want to... I struggle with it because, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to put it put it right out there. I know I'm a... Um, you know, I, I know I'm a, a white guy that's 45 years old and relatively thin... Um, you know, all the things in face value that you're going to see beginning to start to bold, bald, you know, all those things that you might see 
that people have uh, um, that they're uncomfortable with and you know I might represent something if you think that you don't know who I am um, but but I also still recognize deeply that there are things that that come my way that are different repeatedly um and that even goes with with peer groups right like so for example some people are set up in such a way that they have peer groups that they know somebody did something that was adventurous and whatever right like that was a little more risky other people don't have that and they don't have anybody that it did something and still have their life together and things didn't fall apart and all that kind of stuff so you know the question is 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 how do we change this that goes on you if you're listening to this it goes on you because you need to tell everybody that you know that they can do it make awkward questions do things that pe put people in the spot to make them question that yeah you know what i don't know why i'm waiting i i can do this i think it's about building people up more and more and getting people to question these sort of um and i I forget the term right now, but there's a psychological term, avoided test. That's the that's the term. It's not used a lot in the literature, but it's one of the things I really like. An avoided test is where you believe that there is a constraint that exists in the world and you never push on that constraint. So I want you to encourage everybody that you know if you're listening to this, particularly people that are not in these groups that we sort of think about um, or that don't get that exposure to, to pushing boundaries as much, to get people to push these awkward boundaries. That's going to be awkward and it sucks as I'll get out and you might get into trouble for doing it. But to push these little boundaries all the time and encourage people to sort of push on these things so that they know that those boundaries that they have in their mind are not that real and all of those excuses that we have are just excuses you can go out and you can change things if you choose to and it requires people to stand up on mass many times for a long long time but I also want you to look at the history over the last I don't know decade couple decades and you'll start to see that yeah you know things are changing it is a painful slow crappy process but things are changing I just encourage you to be part of that change. Be awkward. All right. Take care. You have a wonderful day.